Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem PP&E 06. This one is going to test your knowledge of journalizing fixed asset disposals. So here we go. We're going to be given an, uh, an information set here and you're going to become familiar with it because over the next four slides, I am going to ask you four separate questions, but they're all going to be based on this information set. Okay, so we won't have to keep redoing a bunch of new math. Um, Tiger Corp purchased a building on June 1, 2019. I give you the capitalized cost. I give you the salvage value. I tell you that Tiger Corp's depreciation policy puts a useful life of 20 years on its buildings, and they use the straight line method of depreciation. Here's your first question. Record the journal entry required if Tiger Corp sells the building on May 31st, 2022 for $227,000 cash, and both in this problem and in all the ones subsequent to it, assume that any depreciation through that date has already been recorded. All right, pause the video, try it for yourself. When you're ready, come on back. I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So um, we're going to have to dispose of our asset. Now, all disposals are, are, are kind of kind of look similar to one another. And, and, and what I mean by that is this. Um, this transaction is going to happen on 5 31 2022 okay? And when you dispose of an asset, you have to take that asset off your books. Because assets are debits, to get them off your books, you credit them. That's what makes them go down. And so the building is going to be a credit in this journal entry. We also know that when we get rid of a fixed asset, any accumulated depreciation that goes with it is also going to have to be gotten rid of. And since accumulated depreciation is a contra asset, it has a credit balance. So to get rid of it, we have to debit it. And so we're going to debit accumulated depreciation building as part of our journal entry. Now, if we're simply getting rid of something, not receiving any cash in return, um, we're not going to have a, a debit for cash. In the case of this problem, where we are actually selling for cash, we are also going to debit cash. And then from there, it's going to be up to us to figure out whether or not we simply broke even, in which case this journal entry will be done as soon as we fill in the numbers, or whether we had a gain or loss, in which case we have to add a, a line for a gain or loss in here. So let's start filling things in. We know we received $227,000 in cash, so debit cash $227,000. We know that the building had a capitalized cost of $250,000, and that is the amount that is going to come out of the building account. Remember, your fixed asset account itself, whether it be a building, vehicle, land, that account stays on the books at historical cost. It does not actually change um, balance. Um, what it does is get paired up with accumulated depreciation, and the net of those two reflects its, its changing value. So we do have to figure out that accumulated depreciation, which was not given to us in the problem, but we were given all the details to calculate what depreciation should be. In this case, we had a capitalized cost of 250,000. Take out the salvage value of 50, the portion of the capitalized cost you don't expect to use up. That gives us what's known as a depreciable cost of $200,000. And this building had a useful life of 20 years. Therefore, the depreciation will be $10,000 per year. So this is depreciation per year. Now, the good news about this problem is if we are selling the building on May 31, 2022, what that means is we are exactly three years from the moment of purchase. June 1, 2019, the next year is May 31st of 2020, the next year is May 31st of 2021, the next year May 31st of 2022. So we are exactly three years out, so times three years means we have $30,000 of depreciation so far on this building. That is the accumulated depreciation we need to get rid of. Last up, figure out whether we broke even or we have a gain or a loss. For that, we need to calculate the book value of the building. Book value is simply its historical cost minus any accumulated depreciation, which gives us a book value of $220,000. Compare that to the cash we received. We received 227. That means we have a gain on this one. We got paid more than the book value. Specifically, we have a gain of 7,000. So we call that gain on sale. 
7,000. Check our debits and credits. Notice 257 in debits, 257 in credits, and we are good to go with this one. Now, I told you we're going to use the same information set for the subsequent questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just copy all this and bring it with us to the next slide, but there will be things in here that are going to change, um, but just to save us from redoing too much work here. All right, so what's different in this problem? Well, all the base information is still the same. Um, the only thing that's changing is the question that's being asked of you. Um, in this case, it says we're selling the building on January 1st, 2025. So this date is going to change. And of course, if the date changes, that means the accumulated depreciation is going to change, which is then going to have all these ripple effects. And the cash amount is going to change. And so since the depreciation and the cash are going to change, we're going to have to redetermine whether or not we break even or have a gain or a loss and whatnot on this. So there we go. We've kind of cleared out all the information that's changing. All the other stuff that's here is, is staying the same. And so here's where I'm going to say, pause the video, see if you can finish the journal entry now based on this new piece of information, the new question being asked. When you're ready, come on back and I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So we know that we're getting 185,000 in cash this time. The real crux of this one is figuring out what the accumulated depreciation is now that we've fast forwarded all the way to January 1 of 2025. And so for this, I'm gonna kind of take a similar approach that we took with the last one. I'm just gonna count the years ahead that we're going. So, you know, we started in 2019. So to get to May 31st of 2020 is one year. May 31st of 2021 is a second year, 22 is a third year, 23 is another year, 24 is another year. So if you look at this, we have counted one, two, three, four, five years. This takes us to May 31st of 2024. So let me just note that down. Five years to May 31st of 2024. However, we need to finish out 2024 because we need to get all the way to January 1 of 2025. And so following May 31st, we still are going to have June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven full months until we get to the point of sale. So then we've got to do plus seven months and that will take us to 1231 of 2024, which is the night before we sell this equipment. So how much accumulated depreciation do we have? Well, we know that we depreciate 10,000 per year. So this five years is gonna put 50,000 of depreciation on the books. However, then we have that extra seven months. And so we're gonna to have to multiply that 10,000 times seven out of 12 months to get our partial year. 10,000 times 7 out of 12, and that's going to come out to 5,833. 5,833. So that means our total accumulated depreciation by the time we get to selling point here is $55,833. So that's what comes out of the account. Um, that's what we have to debit in our journal entry. Moving on to book value, we now recalculate book value with that new accumulated depreciation. So 250,000 minus the 55,833 comes out to 194,167. And now we compare that to the cash received. We only received 185. So we actually received less than our book value, resulting in a loss of 9,167. And so we work that in here as a debit because loss is basically an expense. Loss on sale, 9167 At this point, you could tally up your debits and they should equal your $250,000 credit. And we are done with that version of the problem. Now, I am going to copy our information over. However, I'll go ahead and give you a pro tip here. When we go to the next question, it's actually going to be much less demanding on you. You could solve it the same way we just did, but there's going to be an easier way. And so um, what I'm going to propose to you is consider trying to find the easier way to do this. Again, it's the same information set. 
However, in this case, we're selling the building on January 1, 2040. So our date changes. Our accumulated depreciation is obviously going to change as a result of this, which means our book value is going to change, which means we don't know what the loss of gain is going to be or if we broke even. And it tells us that in this case, we got 55000 in cash, so our cash is going to change. So again, just like the other problem, I've, I've kind of taken us back down to, okay, here's the stuff that stays the same. Now I'm going to challenge you to pause the video and see if you can figure out this journal entry. But remember, there is a much easier way to do it than what we just did. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you found the easy way to do this. Um, you could go through the motions that we just did and say, okay, well, June 1, 2019, well, one year later is May 31st of 2020, and then a year after that, May 31st, 2021, 22, 23, and go all the way to 2039, essentially. However, here's the thing. You only have a useful life of 20 years on this asset, which means once you hit May 31st of 2039, this asset will be fully depreciated. So the fact that you are selling it on January 1 of 2040 means it's fully depreciated by that date. Once, once you hit the end of your depreciation, you just stop depreciating and, and the value is what it is. Now, what does that mean for us in terms of accumulated depreciation and book value? Well, remember the whole point of depreciation is you're depreciating that depreciable cost out on a yearly basis. So your accumulated depreciation as a result of this will be $200,000. That's where you're going to stop depreciating. Your salvage value will be down, I'm sorry, your book value will be down to the salvage value amount of 50,000. And in this case, you received cash of 55, which means you got 5,000 more than book value. So you have a gain in this situation of $5,000. Gain on sale, $5,000, and you're done. Notice that this was a lot simpler, right? Than going through and counting every single year, recognizing the fact that once you hit May 31st of 2039, you're done depreciating. Any date of sale post that is going to have accumulated depreciation of the full depreciable cost and a book value equal to the original salvage value. All right, I'll copy this over and we're gonna do our final one, which again will be a similar nature to this one. So it should not require too much extra work. By the way, I forgot to put the date on that last one. Um, that was January 1 of 40. Okay, so here we go. Same information set. We're going to make one tweak this time. Still going to be January 1 of 2040, but in this case, no one offered to buy the building, and we are choosing to abandon it. What would change as a result of simply abandoning the building on this day? I'm not going to give you any tips by erasing anything here. I'll let you figure it out. When you're ready, come on back, and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So the biggest change here is it's still the same date as, as the third question. However, we aren't getting any cash. And so we're going to go ahead and delete that. No cash. We are still getting rid of a 250 building. And that building still has $200,000 of accumulated depreciation, which means it still has a $50,000 book value. And if we're simply throwing it away, then what that means is we are going to have a loss of $50,000 because we're literally throwing away a $50,000 asset. Loss on retirement. Not sale, because we didn't sell it, but retirement. 50000 and there you go. That's your one tweak to this one. It didn't change much from the last one, but you see the difference between selling for money and simply tossing something away without getting anything in exchange for it. All right, I know that was a long one, but it was four variations on disposals that you can run into, and they're all valid variations. So, you know, hopefully you learned something from seeing them all one after the other and being able to compare and contrast. Um, I hope you found it helpful. And I hope you join me for another video.